With the market heating up due to low inventory, stable interest rates, and increasing buyer activity, we're finding ourselves in an upward trending spring market and buyers are finding themselves in multiple offer and bidding war situations again. So today we're gonna to talk all about multiple offers, how to navigate them, how to make sure your offer is sitting at the top of a seller's pile, and how to save a couple dollars while you're doing it. Firstly, we need to understand what multiple offers means for you. Now in a multiple offer or bidding war situation, you're not going against the seller anymore, you are competing against other buyers. And that makes a difference in how we structure the offer and how we deliver it on offer day. In a situation where you are negotiating with the sellers directly, you're gonna be inclined to not put your best foot forward. Why? Because you wanna save yourself some money and you wanna make sure that you're well protected along the way. The important thing to remember is when you're competing against other buyers, you're not necessarily afforded that luxury because you don't know how their offers are structured. Right, so that means we need to put our best foot forward when we're in multiples. So today we're going to discuss some tips and tricks that will give you a competitive advantage when you're competing against other buyers in a bidding war. So let's jump into how to win in multiple offers. Starting with number one, price. And we all know the saying, money talks, and it sure does. The important thing here is to make sure that you have a firm grasp of what you feel the value of the property is. Do your necessary research, run the comparables, speak with your realtor, and make sure that the number you're going in with is a number that you are comfortable with. And when it comes to overpaying, don't always worry so much. You wanna make sure that you're paying a number that you're comfortable with. And even if you're paying a little bit more than the comparables suggest, if you would be devastated to lose the property and you know you're gonna be in there for a long time, that may still make it a great investment for you. So know the price that you're comfortable with and go in strong with that. And piggybacking off of that, it's really important that you understand what is actually happening in the market because that's a huge determining factor as well. The ironic thing is a lot of times buyers get tunnel vision and they're only looking at the price of this property and what they're not considering is prices are going up really fast. So in a scenario where you're holding back by maybe five or $6,000, you don't wanna go quite that high, you risk the next comparable selling for even more, and then before you know it, you're paying an extra 10 or 15 for the exact same house. Tip number two, come in with a strong deposit. The deposit is a sign of good faith, and a higher deposit makes it harder for the buyer to walk away, so it gives peace of mind to the seller. And in a market like this, sellers are expecting to see a minimum of 5% of the purchase price as a deposit. And if you don't have 5%, get as close to it as possible. Bonus points if you go to the bank on offer day, get your deposit in the form of a bank draft and send a copy of that bank draft along with your offer to the sellers. Number three is conditions. Have you ever heard of buyer's remorse? Well, if you haven't, I promise you most sellers have. And removing conditions is a good way to show them that you are serious about the purchase, but that comes with a huge caveat. We're still looking to protect ourselves in the transaction. And so if you are considering removing your conditions, that just means you have to do all your due diligence before submitting the offer. Now, what does that look like? Well, in regards to an inspection, you might be inclined to book a second showing and bring an inspector with you to check all the vital parts of the house before putting in that offer. If you're thinking about financing, it's important to have open lines of communication with your broker to make sure that he's vetted you, he's confident in the financing, and that the numbers for the home fit the appraised value of the property. If they don't, you have to make sure you have a big enough overlap to be able to cover any of that with your down payment. So you can remove conditions, but if you're considering it, make sure you've done all your homework already. Now, if the numbers are tight or you're not comfortable removing that financing condition, that's okay. What we need to do is make sure that that conditional period is as tight as possible. So maybe shortening the condition from five business days to three. And regardless of what we do with that condition, it's so crucial that we're conveying your financial strength to the sellers and the listing agent on offer day. And we do this by way of providing them with a letter of pre-approval from your lender. Now the letter of pre-approval is not going to tell the sellers how much you're approved up to. It is just going to let them know that you have been vetted and are able to purchase for the purchase price you've submitted on the documents. Also the contact information for your mortgage broker or lender should be on that letter of pre-approval. It's just an easy way for the sellers to verify that the information provided on the document is accurate and give them peace of mind. All right, now I wanna talk about the closing date. 
Not all buyers are sellers, but most sellers are also buyers. And if they've purchased a property, maybe they're trying to line up their closing date as close as possible. If you can be flexible with when you're planning on closing on the property and give them the exact date that they need, that could give you a huge advantage, especially if other buyers can't accommodate. And last but not least, a personalized letter. Now, I know this sounds hokey, but the reality is many sellers have been in their homes for decades. They've raised families there and created beautiful memories, and it's really important to them that they have an idea of who the house is going to next. Many of them are concerned that an investor is going to pick it up and it's going to be turned into a rental and somebody's not going to be taking care of the property. So if you can convey your letter of intent, let them know a little bit about yourself, as well as maybe point out some of the great improvements that they've done around the house, this can sometimes go a long way. And now if you're sitting here wondering whether or not what we're saying will actually make a difference, we can both tell you from firsthand experience, it does. Now, it won't work every time, but it does work some of the time, and it's always worth trying because you never know when you can give yourself the upper hand without having to spend as much as you possibly can. So consider these options next time you are competing against other buyers. Let us know if you've done any of these at all down below. If you have any questions, let us know, and we would appreciate if you could like and subscribe to the channel for more real estate related content in and around the Durham region.